breaking now a sad end to a search. In just the last 15 minutes, police say they found the body of a missing Lawrence County man. Search crews have been looking for him since yesterday. Channel 11's Jillian Hartman is live at Pulaski Township with the breaking details there. Jillian. That's right. We got a very sad update from police. Less than 10 minutes ago, police say they found Eugene Ross's body at around 10 this morning, and police just notified the family about 20 minutes ago inside their home right over here in a few hundred yards away down this road back in the woods. That's where state police chopper located Eugene Ross's body and his ATV. Police say it appears he went over an embankment. Take a listen. When he went over the embankment, it appears that uh, the victim struck his head off the handlebars, rolling off of the four-wheeler and then into a small creek. And that's where we found him. Very sad news. Here's a photo of Eugene Ross. He was 74 years old. Police say he might have hit his head when going over that embankment. Now the coroner will be doing an autopsy to determine the cause of death. Now Eugene Ross was last seen yesterday on his ATV. His wife told police he rides his ATV all the time to check out his hunting spots. But yesterday he never returned home. Police say he was last seen at around 3 in the afternoon and was reported missing a few hours later. Now search team Teams immediately start looking for him. Here's video of their search efforts overnight and into this morning. We saw a chopper circling in the area, canines on the ground, and firefighters on four wheelers searching the woods. This is a heavily wooded area, which made this search even more challenging, not to mention the cold temperatures we experienced this morning. Now, some friends of Eugene were out here this morning. I talked to them off camera. They tell me that they were helping to find their longtime friend, and they say he was a great guy and loves the outdoors. Now we're staying on top of this story for you. We'll have updates for you throughout the day online and tonight at five o'clock. Reporting live, I'm Jillian Hartman, Channel 11 News. New at noon, the man police say is responsible for this little girl's death is heading to trial. Channel 11's Mike Holden joins us live at City Court. And Mike, a very emotional morning there. Gordon, it was difficult just being in there and witnessing that little girl's family members from the moment they walked into city court right here behind me to the time they left. They were in tears, embracing one another, trying to process this horrible, horrible situation. In the meantime, the suspect in this case remained totally silent, did not say a word, but we learned new information at this afternoon hour. According to detectives who talked to him, he claims this was a terrible, terrible accident. All charges against Marlon Pritchard were held for court, and he is now heading to trial. During the preliminary hearing, a detective testified and said Pritchard was, quote, sobbing, very distraught, very upset, to the point he was banging his head off of an interview table after the shooting happened. He told detectives that this was his fault, and there was nothing he could do to undo it. Investigators say he shot and killed Chastity Clancy. Pritchard's girlfriend was watching the three-year-old and another little girl back on February 9th. Detectives testified Pritchard slept with a gun because he claimed people were after him. Pritchard told them he was in bed with Chastity when he heard a loud bang. Police say she ultimately died from a gunshot wound. Chastity's family came to court standing together and supporting one another. During the hearing, some of them quietly wept and wiped away tears as they heard detectives describe the gruesome crime scene. They said they were too broken up to talk on camera. And today, Pritchard remains locked up in the Allegheny County Jail, not able to post bond. He is set to go before a judge for his formal arraignment that is tentatively set for March 23rd. Of course, we'll be there for that. But that's not the end of this story. Coming up on Channel 11 News at 5, we're taking a closer look at the police investigation. Plus, the one moment in court today about the weapon, where he claims that gun came from, and why he says it wasn't necessarily his. That's all starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting live outside of City Court, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. Kids were evacuated from Central Elementary School in the Elizabeth Forward School District this morning. The principal told parents there was a gas concern. In the alert, the principal said no one was ever in any danger and the evacuation was just a precaution. Students were moved to the middle school auditorium until the all clear is given. 
A bitter cold start to the day right now. Sunshine, though, and we will see a warm-up for the weekend. And sunshine, too, yes. <laughs> Meteorologist Stephanie Allison has her forecast in severe weather center 11. It's going to be beautiful this beautiful, weekend. Beautiful, and it looks beautiful. A little bit deceiving, maybe, if you haven't stepped mm -hmm. outside yet. Plenty of sunshine out there. It is 26, so it's very cold. We started this morning very frosty. Many of us waking up between 9 and 13 degrees early this morning. We're going to kind of continue to see that trend in the forecast over the next several days with that cold start to the mornings, but we have warmer finishes ahead. It's the great news. Showing you the pen dot cam, just the blue skies that are out there, gorgeous conditions, dry conditions as well. It's just cold. 26 in Pittsburgh, 25 in Greensburg, and there you can see some numbers starting to get closer to that 30 degree mark in Washington at 29. So those marks will continue to go up. We're going to get above freezing this afternoon. Most of us topping out in the mid 30s, and we stay dry into this evening. So if you have dinner plans tonight, going out and about, you're still going to need those layers. So the sunglasses and heavy layers this afternoon because it is going to be chilly out there and you'll need those layers into the evening as well. How cold we get tonight and how warm we get into the weekend, those details are coming up in a few minutes. Peggy? Thank you. We are working to find out more about a Pittsburgh firefighter arrested in an undercover FBI sting. He's accused of trying to meet up with a woman and her young daughter for sex. The criminal complaint on this guy, so disturbing, we can't reveal many of the details to you on television. Investigators say Brian Kasanovich traveled more than 350 miles from Pittsburgh to Virginia, where he thought he would be meeting the girl. Instead, he was met by FBI agents. The Pittsburgh firefighter was busted here in a restaurant in Midlothian, Virginia. Agents say they used a social media account to pose as an adult who had access to a 10-year-old girl. Paperwork states that Kosanovich started using a website back in November to set up the elaborate plan. A spokesperson for the city told Channel 11, quote, the charges against the firefighter identified in an FBI investigation as Brian Kosanovich are deeply disturbing. He was immediately removed from duty and placed on unpaid administrative leave pending an administrative investigation. So for now, he is off his firefighter job and facing a list of federal charges. Deja vu. It appears Russia is trying once more to tilt the odds of the next election in President Donald Trump's favor. And it's not just the 2020 general election they're after. NBC News correspondent Susan McGinnis has more on the warning from one top election official and the president's reaction. According to the New York Times, Russia is again at work to help President Trump get reelected. Multiple sources tell the Times intelligence officials warned House lawmakers last week of Russia's operation. The briefing reportedly angering the president so much he fired his acting director of national intelligence. When Trump heard about that, he hit the roof, screamed at Joe McGuire, according to my source, um, and that spelled the end of Joe McGuire's candidacy. Former CIA Director John Brennan tweeting, "We are now in." A full blown national security crisis. You did. You and your campaign. You and the As the race for the Democratic presidential nomination reaches a fever pitch, Russia is also said to be working to influence the Democratic primaries. One more worry for candidates battling for the nomination, with Nevada's caucuses tomorrow and Super Tuesday next month. President Trump last night mocking Democratic candidates. Now, Mike didn't do too well. He went way down. How about Klobuchar? Did you see her? She choked. The president also defending longtime friend and advisor Roger Stone, sentenced on Thursday to more than three years in prison for hindering the investigation into Russian interference in the last election. How can you have a jury pool tainted so badly? It's not fair. It's not fair. And you know, it's not happening to a lot of other people. The president, after handing out pardons and commutations to nearly a dozen high profile criminals, not ruling out a pardon for Stone. Susan McGinnis, NBC News, Washington. Voters seem to be paying attention to the race for the White House. Nearly 20 million viewers tuned in to Wednesday night's Democratic primary debate. That makes it the most watched Democratic primary debate of all time. Thousands of people are showing their support to change how the state issues Amber Alerts. They are signing a petition to encourage lawmakers to pass the Nalani Johnson rule. It would speed up the process in cases like Nalani's. The Penn Hills toddler was kidnapped and murdered last year. Her family says it took more than two hours for police to issue the alert. State Rep Tony DeLuca plans to introduce the bill as soon as possible.
Still no verdict in the Harvey Weinstein trial, his sex assault trial. Yesterday, jurors sent two notes to the judge asking about testimony and an exhibit in the case. The Hollywood producer is accused of raping a woman and sexually assaulting another. He has denied the charges. Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman has unblocked two men from Twitter but refuses to apologize to them. We told you about this earlier this week. Fetterman blocked two men from his personal Twitter account for what he called unwelcomed comments toward his family. The men threatened to sue if Fetterman didn't unblock them by today. In a statement, Fetterman said the issue will be revisited if they target his family again. A U.S. Court of Appeals actually ruled on personal versus professional accounts in a case against President Donald Trump, and they decided the president cannot block users from the feed he regularly uses to communicate with the public. Seems everyone is taking one of those DNA tests these days, but they come with a price. You sign away your genetic code. We take a look at the fine print to see how you're protected. And we rode along with police as they broke down the door of a suspected drug house in Avalon. The disturbing discovery officers made once they got inside. And you'll need those warm winter layers all day today, but we warm up this weekend. How warm will it get? And what's the best day to get outside? Those details, they're coming up next. Wow, that's what I call Alex. All of Trebek's favorite phrases in one show. Ooh, sorry. You're out of the hole. And finally, make a selection. Watch Jeopardy to hear them all. Jeopardy, tonight at 7, followed by Wheel of Fortune. for the Pennsylvania Lottery is Channel 11. You can only see the lottery drawings on Channel 11 right before Jeopardy and at 11.11 on Channel 11 News. The Pennsylvania Lottery is on Channel 11. Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. Officers with guns drawn storm a suspected drug house with children inside. Only Channel 11's Joe Arena rode along with police who worked to get the heroin and cocaine off the streets. A month long investigation ends in just a matter of seconds. Avalon Police Chief Tom Kokoski and his team got the targets they wanted in custody. This uh, particular house we've been investigating for several months. Uh, we've done some control buys out of this uh, residence. And uh, 
now today's pretty much go time. The Avalon Police Department, with help from Bellevue Police, served a warrant at a house where they say crack cocaine was being sold. The chief and his team invited Channel 11 along after learning everything about this house on Cleveland Avenue. But just as we were about to roll out, the chief said every bust is different. Once you're at the door and you enter, you really don't know uh, what's going to happen. We get uh, great assistance from the neighboring department, Bellevue Police. Uh, we work together here. Uh, we back them up. We, uh, mm -hmm. They back us up. Uh, so it's a great working relationship. In this case, Chief Kukoski told us his officers faced two pit bulls in the house. And they also discovered children inside. Those children were removed from the home. The drug dealers today got the business end of what we do. 41 year old Bruce Arlotta was cuffed at the scene, and these two women were also arrested and now face charges. The end to a huge investigation and a coordinated effort. If you're a drug dealer in Avalon, you're probably going to have a short shelf life. And while the chief says today was Avalon's day, tomorrow it'll be another local police department taking drugs off the streets. Joe Arena, Channel 11 News. A local college was attacked by hackers. Butler County Community College has restored most of their systems following a ransomware attack last weekend. The attack encrypted and disabled several file systems. No personal information was taken, but the hackers demanded $147,000. It's unknown if that was paid. A local cybersecurity firm is helping get things back online. Everything should be restored by next week. And more details now. In the past year, the Butler County Library, several businesses in Greensburg, and Washington City Hall were all hit by cyber attacks. Riders have saved four Port Authority bus stops. Plans were announced last year to close stops on Penn Avenue, Josephine, Salisbury, and East Carson. Since then, more than 200 people gave their feedback, and after reviewing their concerns, the Port Authority decided to keep those stops. 23 other stops south of downtown and through the East End will still be eliminated. A really scary scene in Cleveland when a nine year old girl was hit by a car while she was getting off the bus. She was rushed into surgery. She will be okay, we're told. As for the driver, they never even stopped. Police say they know where the car is, but so far, no arrest in this case. And if you can't stress it enough, be extra careful around school buses and follow the laws. When you don't stop for the bus, this can happen. This is in North Versailles, where that red SUV ignored the buses' flashing lights. Every day, 95,000 drivers illegally pass school buses across the country, and most are never caught. The punishment in Pennsylvania is a $250 fine and 60 day suspension of your license. Officials are looking at ways to open a Ross Township park that has been closed for months. Shortline Hollow Park has been closed since last fall. That's because debris from Reese Run Road, the landslide there was being dumped at the park's entrance. According to the Trib, that's the only site where they could do that. So now officials are considering a new entrance to avoid the debris. We told you back in December when Reese Run Road finally reopened, it was closed last May after a landslide sent mud, trees, and more into the roadway. Crews had to tear down a house and repair the slide before it could open back up. Leaders in Cranberry are unveiling some major development plans for the township. A meeting was held last night to discuss the work. Hundreds of houses, apartments, and townhouses have been approved for construction. There are also plans for a bakery, microbrewery, deli, and Asian grocery store, as well as an axe throwing bar. People really want people oriented uses, things that they can do, things that are recreation or entertainment based. Also plans for an indoor dog park, which would be open year-round. One thing that won't be coming in is a Taco Bell. Township officials say Cranberry is not the location to accommodate corporate guidelines and significant traffic a Taco Bell would create. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Well, check this out. Arctic air that dropped into our area actually helped portions of the south get a little snow. This system produced a thin layer that blanketed parts of the south that's not used to seeing snow. And some of the heaviest snowfall took place at the border between North Carolina and South Carolina. Even parts of Virginia saw snow. And there were reports of downed trees. Now, we had, they had snow there. There was good snow for packing. And when that uh, snow fell over the trees, it just kind of weighed down the trees there.
in those areas providing those uh, power outages. But most of it melted because the ground was so warm there. For us here back home, it is cold, but it's dry, and we have plenty of sunshine. Look at that pen dot cam showing you in Wexford. Look at the blue sky that we have out there. We're going to be used to seeing that over the next couple of days as we have some gorgeous weather ahead. But it is cold, so it looks warm, but the sunglasses and all those layers needed today and into tonight. 26 now outside, clear skies. The clear skies continue, so we're pushing those clouds away today as that high pressure system pulls on in. Look at some of these marks. Now, this morning we started, some of us even in the single digits early this morning. Fl Franklin right now at 27, 26 in Butler, 30 in Beaver now. So trying to get closer to that freezing mark here this afternoon. 29 in Washington. We'll get just above that as we head later on into the afternoon hours. Our average high is 41. So we're coming in just below that here this afternoon. And into the evening, look at these marks headed down. Our average overnight low is 24. So we have the sunshine, but it is very cold. So barely a cloud in the sky this weekend, and the winds will start to shift. So that's the key of the weekend. That's what's going to help us warm up throughout the daytimes with the sunshine and the forecast. So today, lots of sunshine. We do have clouds moving out as that high pressure builds. So still cold at 35 and coming in below average. Tonight, because we'll have the clear skies and the light winds, temperatures will drop off very quickly this evening. So if you're headed out to dinner with the family, maybe to the movies later on when you head home, 32, uh, right at 7 o'clock, we get down into the 20s for us overnight, down to 22. So clearing cold tonight. Our average let in the overnight low is 24. And some of us tomorrow morning, because we have the clear skies and the light winds, we will even wake up with some spots in the teens tomorrow morning. So very cold start for your Saturday morning. And great if you want to get outside and enjoy the weekend. So tomorrow, if you want to head skiing, that is a good day to do so because we're still going to be cold enough up there in the mountains to enjoy the beautiful snow. And uh, 36 at 1 o'clock. 38 at 5. You'll need the sunglasses uh, for sure tomorrow if you are headed up to the mountains and all those layers. It will be cold up there. We warm up a little bit more though here tomorrow. Great days to get out to wash the car today. If you do so, you have a beautiful car all weekend long as we'll see uh, beautiful skies as that high pressure really takes over. 45, so warmer tomorrow and Sunday near 50. Look at all that sunshine this weekend. We'll start to see some clouds build back in Sunday ahead of the next system. But your overnight lows are going to be very cold. So we're going to start the mornings frosty Saturday and Sunday. But we're going to have some nice mild air in the forecast over the weekend because the wind shifts out of the south, warming us up nicely. The next system that comes into play is Monday. I'll talk more about that here in the next half hour. She called it despicable. As well, that, the that's crime. a good description. Burglarizing the dead, the items stolen from local homes as their owners were being buried. Are you for it or against it? I'm all for it. The new push to legalize pot in Pennsylvania and why local lawmakers are confident this time that it would pass. Hey, Pittsburgh, if you haven't signed up for local steals and deals, now is the time. Just get out your phone and text the word WPXI to phone number 65000, and I'll send you everything you need to get the most exclusive deals in town. That's WPXI to phone number 65000, and you'll be the first to know. A special song and a meal to honor police. The local elementary school hosted nearly 20 officers to teach students kindness and an appreciation for law enforcement. We really appreciate when uh, we are invited to take part in things like this. Giving back to those who protect and serve makes us proud to be from Pittsburgh. Proud to be from Pittsburgh. Brought to you by your local Honda dealers. Great cars, great people. For a great deal on a Honda, visit shop.
Drawings on Channel 11. Look for drawings at 7 and 11 11 p.m. There's a new push to legalize recreational marijuana in Pennsylvania. State Representative Jake Wheatley has come up with a new bill to legalize cannabis for adult use. It also addresses criminal and social reform. Representative Wheatley says that's as long as those charges don't include violent offenses. People serving jail time could get out now if this bill was passed. But he says there's a bigger issue at hand, our current Medical Marijuana Act. We don't believe that if we have something that's legal, you know, that people should be going to jail for the same thing that is legal in another, in an, another part of our um, state apparatus. But Republican House Representative Mike Straub says it creates problems with gun ownership, employment laws, and those issues need to be addressed first. A Pennsylvania Little League plans to ban the Astros as a team name. The league in Luzerne County hopes others will do the same. That ban coming in the wake of the Houston's uh, electronic sign stealing operation. League officials say they don't think the Astros are a good example for their kids and they hope this will teach them a lesson. <laughs> Speak of learning a lesson, who could forget this? Parents getting into a fight at a kid's baseball game, all because of a call made by the umpire. It has people taking notice. Ohio is about to pass a law that would stiffen penalties for students, parents, or spectators who attack an umpire or a referee. They could soon face a $1,500 fine and would be forced to do 40 hours of community service. And if the attacker uses a helmet or a baseball bat, charges could be upgraded to a felony. It's sad to see this particular icon go away. The old Foley's warehouse could be soon coming down. We're getting a look at what, what may take its place. There's a new danger heading our way. We're somewhat immune to, to meth, but that, that's changing. Target 11 investigates the meth comeback and why it's more dangerous than ever before. When news is happening near you, Channel 11 is there. Aliquippa, Coriopolis, Moon. We cover news everywhere you live. That's what makes Channel 11 News different. We're in McCandless, Cranberry, Butler. For news from where you live, watch Channel
Now the news 11 and 11 means you get 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. It means live coverage of breaking news, local news, and your first look at weather. All before the first commercial. Channel 11 News 11 and 11. Watch tonight. Watch David Johnson and Peggy Finnegan on Channel 11 News at 5. There's a new danger in our communities. Meth is making a big comeback. Just recently, 32 people across Pennsylvania were arrested after a large meth bus near Altoona. Target 11 investigator Rick Earl looks into how this meth is different than what our area has seen before. Nationally, they talk about that as the fourth wave of the opi opioid epidemic. A warning tonight from U.S. Attorney Scott Brady here in Pittsburgh. He says communities, especially to the north and southwest of Pittsburgh, are seeing an influx of meth. And it's different from what the drug was a decade ago. It's not the one pot, you know, homemade meth operations mm -hmm. that we saw maybe 10 years sure. ago. Right. Now it is cartel meth, Mexican cartel meth that has a purity level of 93, 95 percent or greater. Brady says counties, especially in northwest Pennsylvania, including Erie, Crawford, Mercer, Venango, Warren, and Jefferson, have been hit hard. It has devastated those communities. And he says it's headed here. It's coming up from West Virginia. It's coming over from Ohio. Again, for some reason, the southwest uh, was really opioids, fentanyl, heroin, cocaine, and crack uh, were somewhat immune to, to meth. But that, that's changing. Three years ago, during the height of the heroin epidemic in southwestern Pennsylvania, Target 11 traveled to the U.S.-Mexican border and working with the DEA and Border Patrol, got an up-close look at efforts in Laredo, Texas, along the Rio Grande to disrupt the heroin pipeline. And that checkpoint right there, it's the first line of defense. U.S. Attorney Brady says the cartels are using similar pipelines now, but moving meth. The cartels have extensive uh, distribution networks throughout the United States that we're constantly trying to disrupt and close down. Brady says the DEA and state police have busted shipments of meth bound for New York and Philadelphia. And now, in an effort to prepare communities in the Pittsburgh region, Brady recently met with law enforcement officials in Fayette and Indiana counties. We're going to do it in the, the same way we've attacked the opioid epidemic. We're going to be shoulder to shoulder with our state and local partners. Experts say several factors are contributing to this surge. More than a decade ago, the federal government clamped down on over the counter drugs used to make meth here. The Mexican cartels, they say, saw an opening. It's cheaper and more potent than other drugs and now becoming more readily available. On the North Shore, Rick Earl, Channel 11 News. Because of the recent surge in meth, the federal government is now allowing states to use federal dollars that had been earmarked for the opioid epidemic to deal with the meth and cocaine increase. A bitterly cold start to the day. Right now, though, plenty of sunshine. That helps. Looks pretty good out there. Meteorologist Stephanie Allison has her forecast now at Severe Weather Center 11. That's just start of the change. So the sunshine is number one. And, you know, sunshine doesn't always mean warm weather, but this high pressure that's going to build in into the weekend will warm us up as we head into Saturday and into Sunday. So right now, still that cold air mass overhead, 26 in Pittsburgh right now. And across the board there, just some very cold air that's out there right now. 27 headed up towards uh, parts of Indiana and then 25 in Greensburg, 23 in Somerset, 29 in Washington right now. Those marks get above freezing this afternoon, just a little bit above freezing. And the wind's not a huge factor in the forecast for us today, but certainly a very light wind with those cold marks between 5 and 10 miles per hour will give you wind chills this morning uh, into your lunchtime and early afternoon hours in the teens for some right now, such as Greensburg that feels like 15. So this afternoon, we'll see 32 at 2 o'clock, 34 at 4 o'clock, so just above that freezing mark for a very cold afternoon. If you're headed out running, make sure you have those layers and the sunglasses. We warm up into the weekend. I'll let you know how warm we get and the best day. And there's going to be plenty of time to get outside this weekend. We have a beautiful forecast, but I'll let you know when the warmest air hits the forecast coming up next. We want to repay them and we want to ask for their forgiveness. He's just a shyster, that's all. Only on 11, too little, too late. One customer is not accepting a contractor's apology. That contractor made the apology in court yesterday as he faced charges of fraud, deceptive business practices, and theft. In one case, Vincent Baer was accused of charging a woman thousands of dollars to renovate her rental property in Scott Township, but never did the work. Baer apologized in court and brought a check for $11,000 to pay his victims back. I didn't believe him because I dealt with him and... That's the way he acted, and I, uh, uh, you know, I trusted him. 
For now, the money will remain the property of the court. By law, it will be sent to the victims in 30 days. We have new information on a crime in Washington County. Someone's breaking into homes during funerals in Carroll Township. Two houses were hit in just the last three weeks in the Craven Drive neighborhood. Investigators say they forced their way into the back of the homes of people who had just passed away and then ransacked them, taking jewelry, clothes, bags, anything they could find. It's a shame. I mean, you know, it's got everybody nervous on our hill here. I mean, there's a lot of elderly, elderly people that live up here, and they're, they're nervous. Police say you could try to keep someone at the home during the funeral or call police for extra patrols. More change for the Woolies building in the Strip. A developer wants to turn it into an office tower. At 21 stories, it would easily be the tallest building in the Strip. Channel 11's Michelle Chavez has more on the developer's tall plans. This sign's been out there since I was a kid. It's only a matter of time. I like the, um, uh, that little eye that blinks. Before that smile is no more. It is a uh, Pittsburgh cultural icon, and, you know, it's sad, to, it's sad to hear that it'll be going away. And the drive into the Strip District will be a little different. In its place, a 21-story office building will take over. Largely retail at the base building or at, at grade level. Uh, parking, an amenity floor, and then uh, office floors above that. This is the current view of downtown, and with that new development, it would mean a change to the Pittsburgh skyline. That's the nature of development, right? It's going to change some people's perspective, but I think we were very thoughtful about how timeless the building will be, and I think a lot of people in Pittsburgh will be very proud of it. That change is met with both hope and skepticism. I just hope that progress is maybe tempered with a, <laughs> with a, a note of, of keeping our culture. I see a lot of uh, movement here, a lot of people coming, settling down, and uh, I feel it's good for the city. So many uh, uh, historic uh, features in Pittsburgh, and it seems like they're all going away. As for the iconic Wally sign, they mix it up with the new development. That'd be wonderful. Save that sign, because <laughs> I like it. It looks like the developers may listen as they finalize construction plans that could begin over the summer. We'd love to see the sign live on in some way, and, and, and certainly are open to suggestions. Michelle Chavez for Channel 11 News. Family kits are all the rage. You can find out about your family and your health, but they do come at a cost. Signing away your genetic code, how insurance companies could use it against you. The bus is back in school. Why his surprise visit at this school could impact future careers for students. News is happening in your neighborhood. Channel 11 News is there. We're in McCandless, Cranberry, and Butler. We cover news everywhere you live, not just downtown. We're in Aliquippa, Coriopolis, and Moon. Bringing you stories that impact your town. That's what makes Channel 11 News different. More local news from more neighborhoods. That's a fact. We're in Bethel Park, South Park, and Mount Lebanon. When you want news from where you live. Watch Channel 11 News.
Johnson and Lisa Sylvester on Channel 11 News 11 at 11. A big happy birthday to Zane. He is the comfort dog for the Pittsburgh Police Department. The department threw Zane a potty. Get it? Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> he enjoyed his cake from Three Dog Bakery. He is pretty cute. Yeah, he is. The bus is back in school. Former Pittsburgh Steeler Jerome Bettis and current Channel 11 host visited uh, kids at Washington Park Elementary. It's part of a program called Innovation Huddle, created by the Bus Stops Here Foundation. The program teaches students about coding, animation, robotics, and more. Right now, about 20 kids in grades 4 through 6 stay after school to participate. We were there yesterday when Bettis stopped in and surprised the kids. The goal is to, is to really to create that interest uh, into this technology uh, that hopefully will inspire all of us in years to come. The Bus Stops Here Foundation helps troubled youth in Pittsburgh and Detroit by providing financial, education, and recreational programs. It seems everyone is taking those DNA tests these days, but they come with a price. Because you sign away your genetic code, we're going to take a look at the fine print to see how you're protected. And it sure is cold outside right now, but at least we have the sunshine. Warmer air on the way. A look at your weekend forecast. That's next. This is Channel 11 News 11 at 11. Accurate details, experienced coverage, trusted weather source. Heavier snowfall moving through Westmoreland County. All in the first 11 minutes of our newscast. Count on Channel 11 News 11 at 11. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. We're a team you can count on to cover stories that impact your life. Whether it's across the street or around the world. Channel 11 News at 6. And NBC Nightly News at 6.30. When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. More and more people are using DNA testing to trace their roots and find out more about their health. But what happens to your DNA if the company that does the testing changes hands? PJ Rendawa takes a look at the fine print to see how you're protected. This one's my great-grandfather. How well do you really know yourself? Everybody else on my mom's side was mostly German and Irish. Here's some funeral notices that are all in German. Turns out I'm more English. And the one that really, really surprised me, even though it's only 1%, is from Cameroon and the Congo. Another surprise. This guy came up as a potential sibling. These colorful maps and bar charts come with a price. That's my husband. That's my other son. You sign away your genetic code to a for-profit company. 
it, it's kind of a wild west as far as regulation with these kinds of things. Kathy Roberts with Consumer Reports says the Federal Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act prohibits employers and health insurance companies from discriminating against you based on your genes. That doesn't mean it couldn't happen. Life insurance companies, um, long-term care insurance, disability insurance, these insurers can um, make decisions about, about your premiums, about your coverage based on genetic information. Federal law protects our private health information. DNA testing companies aren't bound to that law. They make up their own rules in their privacy agreements. After recent layoffs at both Ancestry.com and 23andMe, some people worry about what will happen to their genetic information the companies are sold. Could that information be used in ways they didn't agree to? I think who would want access to it would probably be a lot of health care. Um, I think law enforcement is a big one, and I think government... Most I can do is hold them to their word. Dan's putting his faith in Ancestry.com. They assure me that they won't use my DNA for any kind of research or sell it to anybody else for that matter. That looks kind of silly. Kathy worries about what the $80 test could cost her family in the future. And who's that? As a grandmother, I worry about the fact that we've all taken this test and we have, you know, that, that little guy in there. This could have impact him down the road if that data ever was ever compromised. 23 and me and ancestry.com both shared a statement saying they will not sell or share your information with anyone without your explicit consent. Your severe weather team 11 forecast. Good afternoon, I'm meteorologist Stephanie Allison. Beautiful sunshine shining down on our city today. Look at the sun out there. We're going to continue to see this beautiful weather in the forecast this weekend. Now, we got rid of the clouds and the snowflakes that we had. We just now have to get rid of this cold in the forecast. So, we're going to stay cold today. 26 right now. The wind chill 26. Wind's not a big factor for us in the forecast today. It keeps it a little bit cold at times between 5 and 10 miles per hour. But the wind shift out of the south as we move into the weekend, that's what's going to warm us up. 26 in Butler, 31 in Beaver, 26 in Pittsburgh. Look at these marks, 25 in Greensburg. Yesterday's high was 28. We're going to do better than that today with the sunshine. 35 will be your high. So slowly rising above that freezing mark this afternoon. It's going to take some time, a couple more hours here for some. 34, 4 o'clock. And then when the sun goes down, these marks fall off pretty quick. 26 then at 10 o'clock. Our average high is 41. Just above that mark for us tomorrow. Overnight lows about 24. That's your average overnight low. Tonight, most of us are going to be at that 20 mark. So we're going to do better than we did this morning. Most of us woke up at around 10. Even some of us down to 9 degrees this morning. Tomorrow, a better start, but still a frosty start on your Saturday morning. So if you plan to get up out and about, there may be even some marks in the mountains that start the day in the teens tomorrow morning because we have the clear skies and the light winds. That will really allow those temperatures to take a tumble again for us tonight. So, this wind shift out of the south will bring this milder air to the forecast this weekend. 40s for Saturday. Some of us even touch 50 degrees on Sunday. And we stay dry, which is great news because 100% dry all weekend long. We had not had a weekend with dry conditions, and I'm talking a trace of anything trace of rain, trace of snow since just before Christmas, December 21st and 22nd. So this weekend's going to be dry. You can get out and about. So tomorrow, it's still going to be a little bit colder in the 40s, but we are going to have some great conditions in the forecast. So 45 for tomorrow in Pittsburgh, 47 in Greensburg, 47 in Uniontown. The, the mountains will stay a bit colder, so if you headed up there to go skiing this weekend, Saturday will be the colder day in the mountains. Sunday, we get near 50 degrees with sunshine. We're going to start to see some clouds work their way back in this weekend on Sunday, but still beautiful day there, and that's the pick of the weekend because it gets warmer than tomorrow. So look at that forecast there for you. The next system begins to roll in on Monday. Showers will begin to develop, and that system is going to provide cloud cover and some rain for us, and I'm taking it down to 45 there on Monday, even though it's going to be a mild day because of the cloud cover. We're going to have less showers around on Tuesday, so we're going at 50 degrees there, and then this system that we have next week is going to provide some very cold air back into our forecast. Forecast with a chance of rain mixing to snow later in the week next week. So enjoy this beautiful dry stretch this weekend. Get outside and enjoy it.
you spend too much time using your cell phone? A new study shows the majority of Americans are addicted to their phones. Hey, Pittsburgh, if you haven't signed up for local steals and deals, now is the time. Just get out your phone and text the word WPXI to phone number 65000, and I'll send you everything you need to get the most exclusive deals in town. That's WPXI to phone number 65000, and you'll be the first to know. You hear us say Channel 11 News, 11 at 11 all the time. But this is what it means. It means you get 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. It means we deliver breaking news, local news happening now, and details about what's happened since 6. All before the first commercial. 11 at 11 means I'll track storms and bring you your first look at weather before the first commercial. Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. Watch tonight. Stephen Cropper, tracking the weather in your neighborhood. Your home can now smell like McDonald's. Do we want that? Yeah, you want it? Sure, I bought you some. The fast food <laughs> chain is celebrating with the 50th anniversary of the Quarter Pounder with new scented candles that I just bought Peggy. There's even a locket. I'm not sure if the locket is scented, but these candles come in a set of six. They include the bun, ketchup, pickles, cheese, onions, and beef, so they're all separate smells. Golden Arches and Limited.com says burn them all together, though, for maximum deliciousness. So how many times do you check your cell phone? A new report shows most Americans check their phone 160 times a day. That is once every nine minutes. And the reviews.org report shows that 65% of Americans admitted to sleeping with their phones. Companies like Apple and Google are trying to help combat the addiction. They range from weekly usage reports to an envelope that limits your phone's functions. Sadly, I might be close to that. Yeah. I do keep it on hand. A little boy's act of kindness is going viral. It was all caught on camera. Doorbell cam video shows Ryan Catterson delivering a pizza to a home in Rhode Island. When he was walking away, the two-year-old runs out of the house and gives him a hug. The boy's mom says that hug meant more than she even realized. Catterson says since the hug, he and the boy's mother had become friends on social media. That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast is tonight at 5. And thanks for watching. Have a great day. Have a great weekend.
is Channel 11 News 11 at 11. 11 at 11 starts with team coverage of this breaking story. Accurate details. We've been covering this story all night. Experienced coverage. Our crew is live in Irwin. Trusted weather source. Steady snowfall about an inch per hour.